you can hear me just type a yes there. Okay, um, welcome back to the lecture. How is everyone going? Do you have a good weekend? So hopefully you do well in the weekend, even though our MCO is extended again until further notice. But hopefully everyone is going, uh, doing well. So if you have chance, go to take a vaccine. By the way, any of you already take the vaccine? Just wondering. Registered. Panaya take the vaccine. Not yet, but okay. <coughs> okay, so um, today we are going to the lecture two, okay, which is more on the physics theory. So, disclaimer first. So, all the slides is for the educational purpose only. All the materials, images, equations used in this slide are obtained from the following source, which is the book that I told you earlier. Okay, um, before I proceed to the lecture today, can anyone tell me what have you learned last week? Anyone? Just a quick revision first. And well, all right. Fabrication. Yep. What is the fabrication process? Anyone? Maybe I pick someone to answer me. Lee Lim, are you here? Yes. Yes. What is fabrication? Uh, I, I forgot already. Forgot already. Okay, never mind. So, okay, Brenda, I will try to upload the note before the lecture every time. I try my best. Okay? Anyone can tell me what is the fabrication? Just tell me what you know. Pong Shui Wen. Are you here? What is fabrication? What you will like? I also know you will like what? Apa do you will like? By the way, Peng Shui Wen is a male or female? Oh, okay. Apa do fabrication? You really shine on the wafer. By the way, can you give me a very simple explanation as what what is a fabrication? Just a simple one. You don't have to tell me about you. Really. Just tell me what is this about only. Mm -hmm. Are you able to do that? Allow doping of silicon. Mm, not. Exactly correct. Okay, never mind. Let me pick another guy. Kyo Yi Si, are you here? Mr. or Miss? Kyo Yi Si. What is fabrication? Yeah, we are waiting for the answers. You can turn on the mic to speak. Yeah. The action of process of manufacturing or inventing something. What is the something about? We all know that the fabrication is to going to do something, manufacture something. But what is the something? Do you see? Yeah. Mr. Wong Chun, you give the answer. Processor chip. Okay. So in short, the fabrication is to fabricate the circuit. If you want to be more specific, is the circuit with a lot of the semiconductor inside a processor chip. That process we call it as a fabrication. So in the process, we are going to use all the UV light, all the let's say uh, etching, 
all the things to make all the transistor or the resistor whatsoever printed on the wafer. That is the process of the fabrication. Okay? So, whenever we talk about the fabrication, last time, the very first lecture, we know that everything is using the silicon. So, silicon actually is the first generation. This one is an extra knowledge for you. Okay? The first generation. Then after that, we got a compound element. Okay. Compound element is just like gallium as a night. Okay. So, this thing we also call it as a second generation. So, this is a first generation. We also got a germanium. And right now, we already got the third generation of the semiconductor. Okay. People may be using the gallium nitride to be the third generation. But why is that so special with this the third generation? You can go to Google and search third generation of semiconductor. So please, you can see that they're using the silicon carbide or the gallium nitride with the advantages of higher power, higher operating temperature, breakdown voltage, which is the current trend in the semiconductor. Okay. Then, by the way, in the future, people are going to use the third generation for many purposes. One of the most significant usage of the third generation is the autonomous car. Okay. In the autonomous car, they got a lot of the third generation of the semiconductor. Okay, even the charger like your Huawei charger. Some of you may know that if you are using a Huawei laptop, their charger can be used uh, with the handphone charger, which means that the Type C handphone charger that you are using in your Huawei phone, you can use for your laptop charging. That one is also the third generation semiconductor. Okay, this is the extra knowledge for you. In the future, we might be using a lot of the third, third generation. Okay, so let's get back to the lecture today. So today we are going to study something about the physics. Okay, we learn about the quantum mechanics today. But before going to the characteristic of the semiconductor, we need to understand how the behavior of the electron, especially how the electron moving. Okay, when we are dealing with all the semiconductor, actually we are playing around with the electron. When we are dealing with the electron, we need to know how it moves. When we are dealing with how it moves, we need to know something like it. Mass, or maybe the velocity, or the momentum. So during our maybe physics, we learn about the velocity, or maybe even the kinetic energy, we learned that before. Kinetic energy, what is the formula of the kinetic energy? Can anyone tell me that? Okay, this one back to your physics. Can even tell me what is the formula of the kinetic energy? Yep, half and square. Thank you for the loud looking for thank you for the answer. Okay, let's have a quick recap on the physics. Okay, whenever we deal with the kinetic energy, we are going to deal with the half and square. Then we know the mass. Then what about the momentum? Anyone tell me what is the formula of the momentum? Anyone? Yep, Chu Zhang Hing say MV. Yep, correct. Not the music video, MV. Mass and the velocity. So last time when we are dealing with all the physics, you are maybe given a diagram, seeing a car moving from one side to another side, then you calculate what is the velocity if the car, the mass of the car is, let's say, equal to 20 kg, then maybe V equals to, let's say, uh, 0.5 MOS, reduce something like this. 
This thing is the standard physics. But how are we going to implement all these things into the semiconductor, especially during the electron? That's what we are going to deal with it later. Okay. So in here, we mentioned that all the motion of the large object, for example, like a car or people moving or even the satellite or the planet moving can be calculated using the basic Newton's law. Whenever we are saying the Newton's law, we know that first law is equal to inertia, then second law equals to blah, 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 if you remember that. Okay. So all this, we are using the classical theoretical physics based on all the Newton's laws, law of all the motions. Okay. But somehow, when you are trying to deal with all the electron, we no longer can use the basic physics to calculate all the electron, all the movement. That's a little bit different right now. Okay. Last time, we can maybe accurately measure all the velocity, la, mass, or whatsoever. But right now, in the electron level, we cannot do that. Okay. Even though we are going to use some of the formula, but the accuracy of the result actually is the, just the estimation. It's not the exact value that we are going to get. Okay. So in order for us to understand this, we need to know the quantum mechanic. Okay. So here's a list. This list is going to be very useful for you in the future. Okay. There are some of the value that we are going to use oftenly. For example, Boltzmann constant. You may see the Boltzmann constant before. Okay. Electron charge, electronic charge. V, 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19. This thing we use often, quite often. Free electron rest mass, which means the mass of the electron. And V equals to 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31. Negative is saying, okay. Impossible to have an electron with the 10 to the power 31 kg. It's kind of impossible. It should be negative 31. Okay. Then this thing, Planck constant. So this thing is quite often used, especially in this lecture, 6.625 times 10 to the power negative 34. Okay. Then maybe the proton mass. So just now we have an electron mass. Right now we are going to have a proton mass. Okay. So this is the proton mass. Then speed of light. I believe you all know. Uh, speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 10 cm per OS, or maybe equals to 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Okay, so this thing we will deal with later. But all these things you don't have to have found, actually, because uh, somehow you will be quite use it often, you can always refer back to this list. Don't worry about it. And then, okay, so in the quantum mechanic, there are basically three rules you need to remember. The first one is the principle of the energy quanta. Second one is the wave particle duality principle. Third one is the uncertainty principle. Okay, we are going to explain one by one later. So in this moment, we are going to focus on the very first rule first, the principle of the energy quanta. Okay. Until this level, any question first before I proceed? No? Yes? Okay, first thing is deal with the principle of energy quanta. Principle of energy quanta. So, in the first principle, he mentioned that if your light is hitting a surface, okay, this is a surface, then your light. Okay, light shining through here. Okay, when you're hitting a surface, it will emit an electron from the surface. Okay, so this is the first rule. But how is it going to happen? So, this process we call it as a photoelectric effect. Okay, photoelectric effect. In the real world, actually, this thing is always happen, okay? Especially when you are dealing with all the X-ray or whatsoever thing, when you are trying to hit a light or a radio wave into somewhere else, it will try to emit one electron come out. This thing will always often use in all the 
X-ray or whatsoever scan. Okay. So, photoelectric process X is the process of the, in the ejection of the electron from a metal plate when light falls on it, which means that in this plate, it absorbs the energy from the light. So, after having the enough energy, he will emit from here to here. Okay. This electron will be coming out here. So, in this electron, it is going to have one kinetic energy, half mv square. Okay, this is the first rule. Okay. So, in the classical physics theory, there are two different arguments. So, in the classical physics theory, when this light is strong enough, Okay, when this one is strong enough, it will emit the electron regardless regardless the frequency level. Which means that let's say if you are going to let's say uh, emit a light, okay, maybe with uh, one hundred joule, for example, uh, with energy one hundred joule, okay. Let's say if your frequency is only, let's say, 10 hertz, it will emit the electron. Or maybe your frequency is 100 hertz, it will also emit the electron. So, as long as this thing is strong enough, this frequency, regardless it's 10, 100, 1000, it will still emit the electron. Because it just consider the power, the level of the energy provided. So this is a classical physics. Okay, you can see that the work function of the material will be overcome and an electron will be emitted from the surface frequency independent of the incident frequency, which means that you are not bothering the frequency, don't care about the frequency. This is a classical theory. But in the quantum mechanics, you are saying that, okay, even though you provide big enough of the light, but you need to hit the certain frequency then you can only knock out the electron. Maybe your frequency must be over, let's say, 150. Then you can only send out the electron. Okay, This is what the quantum mechanics say. Okay? So, this thing will be used in all the modern physics. For example, electric eye door opener, maybe light meter used in a photography or solar panel, all these are using this kind of technology. Okay. In the graph, the frequency you know that as a V, maybe you can write as F, until you hit certain F level, maybe your F zero here, then you can only able to emit the electron out. Okay, so let's see, let's further see. Okay, we got this, like here, electron here. Okay, so in the quantum mechanic, the maximum kinetic energy is going to be linearly increased with the frequency. Okay, and then one of the guy he called it as a prank. I'm not sure whether I heard about this name before. Have you ever heard about this prank? This guy. Anyone listen to this before? Prank constant. Many people are saying this prank constant. Okay. I think, uh, okay, let me maybe discuss with the, okay. This prank constant, we don't care. Yes, let's prank. He's the guy. I think even the Avengers movie also mentioned about him before. During the Avengers, the end game. Okay. Okay, let's get back to here. So during this prank constant, okay, this guy saying that, when the electron is emitted, the energy will be also transferred. And the energy will be transferred in the packet by packet. We call it as a discrete packet of the energy. Then further we call it as quanta. You can imagine that the energy is discrete, all in a discrete. Okay? All transferred in the discrete level. Okay? Is unlike the continuous level. 
it won't be like this okay it somehow is somehow this discrete one energy say in a discrete level Hank constant saying this then he came out with one formula okay e equals to h f okay e is the energy h is a pen constant f is the frequency this is a guy he proposed this and this formula we are going to play around every time here in this lecture okay at first pen constant saying that the energy emitted in here for the electron is in the discrete level then somehow Albert Einstein also coming to mention this okay right now Albert Einstein focus on this part okay Albert Einstein focus this part then the Planck constant focus on this part he's saying that the light the light transfer from here to the surface also in the discrete level okay so which means that this one photon whenever we deal with the light we are always dealing with the photon whenever when it emit from here we are always dealing with the electron don't be confused photon is not equal to the proton it's completely two different items okay photon is from the light proton is from the positive charge of the one of the in the atom okay so Albert is saying that a photon with the sufficient energy can knock an electron from the surface and excess photon energy goes into the Ke of the photo electron which means that when you are going to hit the photon in the surface when your photon coming to here it will transfer all the energy into the electron here then all the electron uh, all the electron will be having the energy from the photon then emit to here with the Ke kinetic energy where the kinetic energy is transferred from the photon previously which means that all the energy of the photon is transferred to the electron to become its kinetic energy okay this is what Albert Einstein is saying in this okay so in short you can see that Albert Einstein play around here in this part then the Planck constant our Planck is playing around here okay then this one is not important the more important is something like this so this we are going to know that Albert Einstein and Planck constant playing around with all these things. Then how are we going to fully utilize all the formula? So let's see one other example here. So right now we are dealing with all the equation, E equals to HF. Okay. For example, this calculate the photon energy corresponding to a particular wavelength. Consider an astray with a wavelength of the this one. <coughs> Uh, lambda equals to 0 0.708 times 10 to the power negative 8. Okay, we all know that the energy of the photon when emitted to here, it will emit the electron here. Okay, the energy will transfer from here to here. So we can use this formula since we know that the Ke will be equal to E. Okay, so we can calculate in this way, which F. Okay, lambda, we know the lambda. Okay, but how, how are we going to know all the all the frequency so one of the famous formula you may you may know that c equals to f lambda okay you might be uh learning this before okay in the physics or whatsoever thing okay c is always a constant okay lambda is a cm we know lambda is a cm so that's why we use our speed of life also a cm three times 10 to the power of 10 divided by the lambda 0 0.708 times 10 to the power negative 8 okay then we can know that what is our frequency so after this frequency we are going to replace the frequency inside back here and which actually is just a plan constant which is equal to 6.625 times 10 to the power of negative 34 okay so by having this we can know that the energy is equal to 2.81 times 10 to the power of 15, negative 15 joule. But somehow in the microelectronic, instead of writing it as a joule, we will convert the joule into the electron volt. 
okay? Because we want it to be more electric basis. So that's why after this 2.81 times 10 to the power of 15, negative 15, we divided by the electronic charge 10 to the power of negative 19. In this case, we can get our final answer as 1.745 times 10 to the power 4 electron volt. Okay, so always remember in our microelectronic, we seldom take it as a joke. We used to mention everything in the electron volt. This is how we do this. Okay, in this case, any questions so far? Okay, so let's try some example. Determine the energy of a photon having the wavelength of the blah 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 this or this and this. Okay, so imagine this photon is already hitting somewhere. Okay, we can use the formula, which is a E equals to H F. Your C. Okay, you can convert it to Cm, no problem. M. Then your Planck constant is equal to. 6.625 times 10 to the power negative 34. Yep. Okay, try to do this, these two. See what's the energy. So this one, uh, I hope you still remember that. So this 1 times 10 to the power of negative 8 cm. M. Okay. This thing I mentioned in the first lecture before. You can refer back to your first lecture slide. Already I wrote it there. Okay, anyone get the answer already?
Okay. Wang Chongyi gets these two answers. What about the rest? Let's see. Wang Chongyi, your answer is in the Zhou or in the electron word? Okay. Let's see the rest. Wenda Koi, what about you? Do you get the same answer as Wang Chongyi? Mm, one point two four electron word. Seriously, ten to the power seventy. So big. Are you sure? Lin Yong Chan, what about you? Looks like he able to get the same answer as the Wang Chong Yi. So let's see the other guy. Okay, Lao Lo Ting get a different answer, which is in the electron work. So let's see. Uh. Let you see my answer. Okay. So maybe let's try to example. Okay. So for the E1, I can get 1.9675 times 10 to the power 17. Second is 4.416 times 10 to the power negative 19. Okay. Wang Chongyi, you might want to check the answer again. So let me see if I can convey into the electron word. Okay, if in the electron word, Lao Lok Jin, your answer is correct. 1.24 EV, has a value of 2 EV. What about your E2? Render, you might want to see your answer again. So in this case, so in this case, let me write my answer over here. The E one is equal to one point two four times ten to the power of two EV. The E two will be two point seven six EV. Yep, correct. The rest of you, do you get the same answer? Or are you still here? Or you are still eating? Any question for this? So maybe you try another few more examples here. So let's say if your lambda is Let's say five thousand e. e maybe um, let's say four five o e. e let's say is a uh, fifty a. Okay, calculate the energy, energy, energy in the electron work. Okay, start doing it now. So let me pick some guy to answer me later. So, Ng Wei Hong, are you here? So Ng Wei Hong, answer this. So next one, Ong Mei Lin, answer this. And one more guy, let's see, Chia Chai Xiu. Are you here? Chia 
try and see you answer this. Okay. Okay, uh, Wei Hong, what's the answer? Okay, keep pressing. Way home, your answer must be in the left hand word. For me, to the left hand word. Okay, let's see. What about Chia Tai Siu? What's your answer? So, on maybe you guess seventy seven point six. OEV. Then on way home, you get two boy for eight EV. Then Chia Chia still get two point four eight times ten above two EV. The rest of you, are you able to get the same answer uh, as them? Now what about you? Are you able to get this three? Han Xiang, what about you? Are you able to get this? Okay, so let's see whether all the answers are correct or not. Let me run my problem here. Okay, E1, 2.48 EV, 27.6 EV, 248 EV. Yep, all correct. Okay, first rules, center. Very simple and easy. So right now, Let's proceed to the second rule. Okay, let me wait. Okay, after we've done the first part, right now, we are going to deal with the second rule. First rule, principle of energy, quanta, sector. Second rule, wave, particle, Duality. Okay, you might be wondering what is this about. 
So in the early debate, there's a discussion to decide if light behaves like a particle or wave. Okay. In the many years ago, people think that light is a series of a beam. Okay. Then somebody argued that light actually is a waveform. Something like this. Okay. But actually it's a two-dimensional wafer. If you remember during the electromagnetic, we don't have this two-dimensional one. Okay. Some saying these are correct, some saying these are correct. Then they are trying to input the light into different phenomena to see whether you can explain it. So let's see. The first one is a reflection. They want to see that if light is a wave, can it be reflected? Or if light is a particle, can it be reflected? Okay. This one is just like B. In the other word, particle. A series of the particles. This one is a waveform. Then they are wondering which one is correct. So somehow they have tested the light in the first thing, refraction. And being light hitting this, it can be refracted. Then this is a particle. Or even though if the light is in the waveform, something like this, when it hit the surface, it also can reflect it. Okay, wave. So both things like particle and wave can work well in the refraction, no problem. But what about the refraction? I'm not sure whether you still remember the refraction before. Okay, do you know what's a refraction phenomenon? Something like this. Okay, this is a refraction. Last time when we were dealing with the size, all these things, this kind of refraction, when you store, uh, let's say, uh, a stick under the water, it seems like it's uh, distorted. Okay. This thing requires a refraction. But this thing can be also explained in the wave and in the particle. Okay. What about the interference? So last time when we talked about the interference, we know that we have to put this two things. Okay, sorry. This, this, and this. And we are trying to emit the light here. Emit the light here. So when you're lighting this, so when you're lighting this, somehow when there's a cross part, there will be an interference or interference. But this phenomenon only appears in the wave, not in the particle. Why do I say that? If the light is the particle, which means that under this condition, it won't have any interference. For example, if light is a particle, you saw a light here particle, you saw a light here also particle, there won't be any cross interference. So that's why lives light somehow it can be having the interference. So that's why if light is a wave, you can explain this phenomenon. But if light is a particle, it cannot explain this because it will hit directly okay, without any interference. Diffraction. Diffraction is something like this. Okay, diffraction. Phenomenon. Which means that when you are going to passing through a gap, the wave will be emitted in this way. You are getting bigger, 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 and bigger. But if your gap is getting bigger, then you can see that the effect is less effective. Okay, this phenomenon we call it as a diffraction. Something like this. This is also the diffraction. Diffraction, something like this. And this thing can be only explained in the wave, but not particle. Imagine that if this is a particle, same thing happened here. Okay, just go through only. You don't have to explain it like this. But unlike this, if this is a wave, it will be having this phenomenon. Okay, so somehow light is can be having the diffraction. 
but it cannot be happening in the particle. So polarization, or maybe the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is the first thing that we mentioned in the lecture today. And it can be explained in the particle, but not in the wave. Okay, based on this list, you can see that the light, somehow it can be explained in the wave, as the wave, and it can be also explained as the particle. So back to the ancient theory. So which one is correct? Somebody arguing that light is a particle. Somebody argued that light is a wave. So after that, conclusion. Conclusion. Light have a wave plus particle behavior. It contains both. Then this guy, we call it as a de Broglie. This is a name. Suggestions that since wave exhibit particle light behavior, particles should be expected to, to show the wave light properties also which means that light will be having the property of wave and the particle concluded by the Broglie. Okay, so after this, he created one hypothesis. He called it as a wave-particle duality principle. Why does we call duality? Because it will be having the wave and particle behavior both together. Okay, so this wave-particle duality principle applies primarily to the small particle, such as the electron. And also proton and neutron. This happens in everywhere. Okay? So, in this case, we also come up with some formula. Right now, okay, see this. Any material particle having the kinetic energy will be having the momentum also. So, photon also have the momentum. Electron also have the momentum. Elba Einstein come back again. He's saying that the photon with the momentum, he has the energy where E equals to this, but this one is not the important. The important is this thing. Okay. The momentum of a photon can be given in the P equals to H over lambda. Okay. This is defined on a photon. Huh? Photon. P equals to H over lambda. P is the momentum. H is the Frank constant. Lambda is a lambda. Okay. Then, the most important thing one is the Broglie one. He come up with the summary here. Okay, wavelength of a moving particle can be expressed as lambda equals to Frank constant divided by p. You can see that it just switch to each other only. Okay, but how are we going to fully utilize this formula? For some of this. Okay, let's see. I try to avoid to explain a very deep physics theory. I just uh, want you to know that how are you going to use all this formula. So for some of this case, consider an electron traveling at the velocity 10 to the power 7 cm over s. Okay, then you can further write as a m over s. Find the de Broglie wavelength. What is it? Which means that he asking you to find the p equals to h over lambda. Lambda is the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, this thing is also always a constant 6.625 times 10 to the power negative 34. But how are we going to get this momentum? Just now, Chu Zhang is saying that P equals to mv. Yep, we already have a v here. V equals to 10 to the power of 5 ms. What about m? M is always a constant. 9.11 and 10 to the power of negative 31. Okay. Then you multiply by the V. Remember, when we are dealing with all the de Broglie wavelength, everything here, everything must be in the SI unit. MOS, MOS, KG. Okay. Then this is 10, 5 equals to 6.625 times 10 to the power of negative 34 over lambda. Then under the switch here, then this thing bring down here. So eventually you can get your value to be 7.27 times 10 to the power of 9. Then you can also relate in this way. So this is how are we going to do this only. So let us try some example here. So for example, let me try the first one. Electron have a kinetic energy of half. MGV. Okay. 
then determine the de Broglie wavelength in this. So first, we know that this is a 12 mEV. Negative 3 eV. Okay? Equals to half mV squared. Okay? He is asking you to determine the de Broglie wavelength, which is lambda. Okay, we all know that if you want to do the lambda, we need to do this P equals to mV. Then we need to know what is the m. V is always a constant, no doubt. Okay, because based on the list that he went there, V is always a constant. 9 by 1 times 10 to the power of negative 31. Okay, in this case, you need to convert this back to the Joe first. Okay, this thing convert back to the Joe. Times 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. First to half mv squared. 12 times 10 to the power of negative 3. 19 divided by 2. Then also divided by 9 by 1, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 31. First to v squared. Okay, after having this, just square it to get by your v. Then you use a mv equals to h over lambda to get the final answer. Okay, very simple only. You just need to apply the formula. Okay, let's try all this question. And before we try this question, let me print screen this and have you as a sample to refer to. Okay, this table. Ready? Yeah, give me a moment. My number is that short. Okay, this one. And paste here. So let's try this all this question. So I'm trying to write all the formula for you here so that you can have a reference. Okay, answer. Okay. Uh, KE equals to half mv squared. Then P equals to mv ratio h over lambda. Lambda is the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, let's try this. Having this all this information, let's try this. So we will continue to discuss the answer after 15 minutes later. So in this, at this moment, if you want to go to the toilet, you just go.
Okay, uh, how many of you have completed every question? May I know that? <coughs> if no, then type a no, so that I can know that. Or maybe you type the question you finish until.
wave line is in M. Yep. In M. The debrocking wave line always dealing with the SI unit. Okay. Okay, how many of you have completed everything? If complete, that was yes. If no, that was no. Okay, now looking yes. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, if you are free to prime me, what about the rest? What about the rest? Anyone? If no, then that one no. So that I can have a crew instead of just waiting briny here. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Why no one will prime me one? Okay. Halfway. Okay, now we'll wait for another, let's say, five to ten minutes in order for you to complete everything. Then we'll discuss.
okay, I have created a poll. Try to work whether you have completed the question or not in the poll. Okay. Okay, um, so right now we have more than half people already finished the question. So uh, let's discuss the question right now. Okay, so let me, let me close the poll, see if I can test. Okay, so let's see how we're going to deal with all these things. So you can see that actually, basically, we are just using back the formula. We keep using the same formula only in this case. Okay, so first question. A. Kinetic energy half sorry half mv equals to half mv square. So in this case, we are going to get the v, and then we are going to find the de Broglie flag. Okay. First thing we need to know is we need to use use half m multiplied by two. 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 because it's a EV. Okay, EV. Then multiply 2 divided by the 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 34. Based on the list, M is okay, negative 31. Okay, so and then we square with this. This can give us a V. So let me put this into the calculator. Okay. So, oh, so many things. Okay. Okay, e equals to 12 times 10 to 12, negative 3. And your m is. 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31. And then your E equals to 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. 
Okay, let me cross check all the constant first. Maybe 19, 1 by 6. M is 9 by 1, 1, and center by negative 31. Yep, correct. Okay, then we are going to calculate the V. So this one will be equal to 2 KE multiplied by the E divided by M square root. M E. Okay. And then your V is equal to 2 divided by KE divided by E divided by M. And to the power of 0 0.5. Okay. So this is your V. After your V, you are going to use MV over equals to H over lambda, where your lambda will be equals to H divided by MV. Okay. So let's see. Okay, here asking for the deep working with friend. Yep, we are right. And then we need to get the prime constant, where the prime constant will be equals to. 6.625 times 10 to the power negative 34, which equals to 6.625 times 10 power of negative 34. Okay, so right now, lambda equals to m multiplied lambda head, which divided by m multiplied by b. Okay. So we run this. Our lambda should be equal to 1.12 times 10 to the power of 8. Negative 8. So your lambda, 1.12 times 10 to the power of negative 8 meter. Okay? So you get the same answer. For me, as you, everyone, are you able to get the same answer? Or can say say yes? What about the rest of you? Okay. Any other people? Do you get the same answer or you're having the problem here? Okay, you get the answer as me. Brenda, are you here, Brenda? Anas. Lim Zalim. Okay, my final answer is 1.12 times 10 to the power of negative 8 meter. Okay. All right, here are the, our first question. Let's proceed to the second question. So the first one simple, you see, everyone can do it, no problem. I believe you guys are quite smart, I believe. So no question in this case. So let's go to the B. A particle with a mass, M equals to 2.2 .2 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kg, has a de Broglie wavelength of 1.112 A. And you also can rewrite this 112 times 10 to the power of negative 10. Okay, determine the momentum and the kinetic energy of the particle. So we got the lambda, M constant also got. Okay, so we know that P equals to H over lambda, where it equals to MV also. So from this case, we can know that our V, okay, based on all this, one is given. This thing particle, the mass is also given. Lambda is also given. So we can simply calculate the V. After having the V, we are going to calculate the kinetic energy. So mathematically, let's see this. Okay. So hand constant is here. We don't need this. Mass is changed. So all we need is this two only. So let's see, mass is equal to 
2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 31. And lambda equals to 112 times 10 to the power of negative 10. See, this one is in the meter. We always deal with the meter. Okay? And then momentum P equals to H over lambda. So we'll run this. You can know that your P is 5.9 times 10 to the power negative 26. This is for the momentum. P equals to 5.9 times 10 to the power negative 26 kg MOS. For the momentum, do you get the same answer as me? Momentum, uh, not kinetic energy, because he asked you to get the momentum and the kinetic energy here. Okay? So, after having the momentum, we are able to calculate the V also. Okay? So, let's see what is the V. V equals to the momentum divided by M. So, after having the V, you can calculate the kinetic energy. KE equals to 0 0.5 multiplied by M, multiplied by V, multiplied by V. And this is in Joule, okay? In order for you to convert into the EV, you need to divide it by V. So your kinetic energy, let's see. It's mana there. Mana is KE, are there error? E, why he never print my KE? Okay, never mind. Okay, your KE should be 0 by 0 0.049 in electron volt. And 7 electron volt. But let's say if you don't want to convert into electron volt, fair enough. We're doing this way. But how come you never put my KE out? Oh, so weird. In my KE. Okay, you can get your KE is in also the. 7.95 10 to the power of negative 11 at uh, 21 joule. Okay, do you get the same answer as me for the kinetic energy? Okay, thank you. The rest of you? Okay, let's proceed. Since everyone can get the same answer, everyone are quite okay with this, no problem. So, determine the de Broca wavelength for electron with the kinetic energy of this, this, and this. So, kinetic energy is given, then we also know the mass is equal to 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31. Then, kinetic energy is given, then you from here can calculate the momentum. Then in the same way, calculate the length, uh, lambda. So let us change the parameter here. Okay. I get back all this thing. So let's see. Ah, uh, okay. So this is a V. This is a H. This is a lambda. So at first, it's a 1.2 EV. I change to 1.2. So all these things are here. Let me check first. All looks correct. So the first one, your lambda should be 1.12 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Let me write here. 1.12 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Meter. B. So the next one is the 12 and 1, 2, oh. Change to 12. So your lambda is 3.54. And stand to power negative 10 meter. So the next one is the 1, 2, oh. So C, 1.12 times 10 to power negative 10 meter. Okay, check your answer. See whether it's correct or not for the third one.
Okay. Brenda say okay. Thank you for the quick answer, Brenda. Okay. Shall I proceed to the last question? Okay, let's see the last question. The wavelength of a green light is a 550 nanometer. Okay, if an electron has the same wavelength, determine the electron velocity and the momentum. So, momentum, P equals to H over lambda. Right now is the 550 nanometer. Frank constant, 6.625 times 10 to the power negative 34. Okay, can anyone tell me the value of the momentum? Anyone? Ang Han Xiang, are you here? Okay, others, do you get the same answer as Ang Han Xiang? Okay, so let's cross check here. Okay, right now your lambda is 550 nano times 10 to the power of negative 9. So I believe have P equals to P equals to H over lambda. And this 1.2045 times 10 to the power of negative 27. Everyone correct? Then after that, you can use this to calculate the V. P equals to P equals to P over M. And remove. So your V should be 1300. Okay. MOS. 1322 or 1300. Sorry. 1322. 0.2 meter per second. Everyone, can you get the same answer? Okay, so that's all for the class today. Any question? If no question, then I would like to end the class for today. Thank you everyone for the attention and have a nice day. You may leave the classroom right now. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you everyone. Okay, bye everyone. Um, sir, did you receive the email? Uh, the email here, of, by the way. The email of who? Uh, I'm here, by the way. Uh, I mean, did you receive the email from Ong Kai Shen? Uh, let me check. Uh, no, I didn't receive anything. Oh, okay. Because I, I did call him yesterday and he said he will email so directly. Lah. Then just now I call, I, I message him again and ask him to email again. Uh, he no reply yet. Mm, okay. Uh, maybe you give me his phone number. Ah, okay. All right. I try to sure. contact him. Okay. Yeah, another, Thank you very much. Uh, yep. Another thing is uh, that the day I asked, uh, the inform sir, these two students, their timetable is swept, right? Yep. Then after that, they don't have the invitation for their... Uh, current oh. yeah. okay okay so, I'll, I'll, both. i will try to invite him later okay all right okay thank, okay, you, thank you thank you very much